Hello and welcome to this video on the ZNA Network Analyzer. In this video, I would like to show you how we can make measurements on frequency translation devices that have an embedded local oscillator. Measuring frequency converters that have an internal local oscillator which is not accessible from the outside, for example, satellite converters, can be a challenging task. With the ZNA Network Analyzer, we take the pain out of this with the ZNA K9 option for measuring devices with an embedded local oscillator. The instrument provides a two-tone stimulus to the device under test, and with a dual internal receiver concept, we can simultaneously measure the two tones and their phase relationship at the input and the output of the device under test at the same time. The phase difference between the two tones can be used to calculate the phase response of the device under test, independent of its local oscillator phase and frequency drift. Now let's take a look at the measurement. Here we have set up a mixer, with a bandpass filter. And in this case here, we're driving the local oscillator from our external signal generator. On the instrument, we can select the frequency converting measurement options on here. And then in the two tone group delay, we can see the configuration. Here, we're combining the two tones from within the ZNA network analyzer using the coupler at port three and then we have everything else already set up for the frequency translation. The key thing here is that the local oscillator we set at four gigahertz, but it's not being driven by the network analyzer, it's internal to the device, or in this case, from the external signal generator. We can set down here the IF bandwidth that will be used for the receivers, and importantly, the delta frequency is the aperture between the two tones. So once we have that configured, we can then bring in the delay measurement onto our screen. And now we can see at the moment the uncalibrated group delay response. Now we have to think about how we're going to calibrate the measurement setup. And we have two options. We can either use a, a reference mixer where we provide relative measurements to the group delay of that mixer, or we can use a characterized mixer and use the ZNA K5 option to get the absolute characteristics of that mixer and then use that as part of the calibration routine. Here, we'll just use the relative measurements here and provide the setup with the mixer delay calibration. Now we've calibrated our measurement setup, we can actually look at the results. Here we can see that we have a group delay on the device under test of around about 6.2 nanoseconds. We'll just zoom in. We can see with the setup on here, we're using a single local oscillator for the receiver measurements. So we're having to measure first at the IF, then the RF frequencies. If we use the dual internal local oscillators, then we can see the speed advantage where now it's measuring twice as fast as it was before. Let's just zoom in a bit more into the band of interest. And what I'm going to do here is just take a memory trace of both the magnitude and the group delay. Now we can simulate the effects of the drifting LO on the DUT by changing the frequency of our signal generator. So we just step down, maybe 10 kilohertz below. We can see from the magnitude response that the conversion loss has actually dropped because we're moving outside of the filter window of our receiver. But here where we measure the group delay, then the measurements become a little bit more noisier because the signal level is lower, but we still maintain exactly the same value that we were reading before. Let's go the other way. Back to four gigahertz. Then 10 kilohertz above, we see the power level dropping down again. But the group delay measurement is maintaining an absolutely stable result there. Now, if we're interested in taking the magnitude measurements, then it's important that we can track these changes in the frequency drift, not just in the group delay, but also in the magnitude traces. For this, we have an allo track feature on the network analyzer. In the mode menu, we can enable this. 
and you can see that the magnitude response has now corrected back to the original value, but it's telling us down here that we see that the aloe is drifted by 10 kilohertz. We can even go back to our signal generator and put in a larger offset. So let's maybe as 100, 200, 300, even 500 kilohertz. And each time, the network analyzer is tracking that drift. So we can see here now we're reading 500 kilohertz offset. And now for the final part of the measurement, we're going to add the relative phase. So back into our measurement menu, we can see that the measurement quantities are here. We can take the phase RF to IF, bring this into our display. And then maybe we just want to zoom in a little bit to the band of interest, just so the past band's visible. And in the trace config menu, what I can do is show the phase deviation from zero. And then we have the final setup here where we can see how linear the phase is through the pass band of interest. So in summary, we've seen that the two-tone method from the ZNA network analyzer is the most advanced technique to measure group delay on frequency converters without access to the local oscillator. The ZNA stimulates the DUT with two frequencies simultaneously and measures the phase difference at the input and output in order to obtain the group delay and phase response. This method is robust against common problems like phase and frequency drift of the device's local oscillator during the measurement. And with its multiple internal sources and unique dual local oscillator concept, the ZNA makes the measurements fast, convenient, and trouble-free. It is the ideal tool to measure phase and group delay on multi-stage converters, satellite transponders, or the link between ground stations and satellites in orbit. So thank you for watching this video. Please visit our website if you would like to find more information.